Akkadian Akadu, Ak -kadu -u Logogram, U -r -i -k -i, is an extinct East Semitic language that was spoken in ancient Mesopotamia Akkad, Assyria, Isin, Larsa and Babylonia from the 30th century BC until its gradual replacement by Akkadian influenced Eastern Aramaic among Mesopotamians between the 8th century. It is the earliest attested Semitic language. It used the cuneiform script, which was originally used to write the unrelated, and also extinct, Sumerian which is a language isolate. Akkadian was named after the city of Akkad, a major center of Mesopotamian civilization during the Akkadian Empire c. BC, but the language itself precedes the founding of Akkad by many centuries, being first attested in the 29th century BC. The mutual influence between Sumerian and Akkadian had led scholars to describe the languages as a sprachbund. Akkadian proper names were first attested in Sumerian texts from around the mid 3rd millennium BC. From the second half of the 3rd millennium BC, c. 2500 BC, texts fully written in Akkadian begin to appear. Hundreds of thousands of texts and text fragments have been excavated to date, covering a vast textual tradition of mythological narrative, legal texts, scientific works, correspondence, political and military events, and many other examples. By the second millennium BC, two variant forms of the language were in use in Assyria and Babylonia, known as Assyrian and Babylonian respectively. For centuries, Akkadian was the native language in Mesopotamian nations such as Assyria and Babylonia. Because of the might of various Mesopotamian empires, such as the Akkadian Empire, Old Assyrian Empire, Babylonia, and Middle Assyrian Empire, Akkadian became the lingua franca of much of the ancient Near East. However, it began to decline during the Neo-Assyrian Empire around the 8th century BC, being marginalized by Aramaic during the reign of Tiglath-Pileser III. By the Hellenistic period, the language was largely confined to scholars and priests working in temples in Assyria and Babylonia. The last known Akkadian cuneiform document dates from the 1st century AD. Neo-Mandaic spoken by the Mandaeans, and Assyrian Neo-Aramaic spoken by the Assyrian people, are two of the few modern Semitic languages that contain some Akkadian vocabulary and grammatical features. Akkadian is a fusional language with grammatical case, and like all Semitic languages, Akkadian uses the system of consonantal roots. The Kultip texts, which were written in Old Assyrian, include Hittite loanwords and names, which constitute the oldest record of any language of the Indo-European languages. Classification Akkadian belongs with the other Semitic languages in the Near Eastern branch of the Afroasiatic languages, a family native to the Middle East, Arabian Peninsula, parts of Anatolia, North Africa, Malta, Canary Islands and then spread to the Horn of Africa by the 8th century BC, which then later spread further to parts of West Africa Hausa. Akkadian and its successor Aramaic however are only ever attested in Mesopotamia and the Near East. Within the Near Eastern Semitic languages, Akkadian forms an East Semitic subgroup with Eblate. This group distinguishes itself from the Northwest and South Semitic languages by its subject-object verb, while the other Semitic languages usually have either a verb-subject-object or subject-verb-object order. This novel word order is due to the influence of the Sumerian substratum, which has an SOV order. Additionally Akkadian is the only Semitic language to use the prepositions ina and ana locative case, English in, on, with, and date of locative case, for, to, respectively. Other Semitic languages like Arabic and Aramaic have the prepositions by, b and li, l locative and dative, respectively. The origin of the Akkadian spatial prepositions is unknown. In contrast to most other Semitic languages, Akkadian has only one non-sibilant fricative, h, x. Akkadian lost both the glottal and pharyngeal fricatives, which are characteristic of the other Semitic languages. Until the Old Babylonian period, the Akkadian sibilants were exclusively affricated. History and writing Writing Old Akkadian is preserved on clay tablets dating back to c. 2500 BC. It was written using cuneiform, a script adopted from the Sumerians using wedge-shaped symbols pressed in wet clay. 
As employed by Akkadian scribes, the adapted cuneiform script could represent either a Sumerian logograms i.e., picture-based characters representing entire words, b Sumerian syllables, c Akkadian syllables, or d phonetic complements. However, in Akkadian the script practically became a fully-fledged syllabic script, and the original logographic nature of cuneiform became secondary, though logograms for frequent words such as God and temple continued to be used. For this reason, the sinon can on the one hand be a logogram for the word ilam God and on the other signify the god anew or even the syllable an. Additionally, this sign was used as a determinative for divine names. Another peculiarity of Akkadian cuneiform is that many signs do not have a well-defined phonetic value. Certain signs, such as a, do not distinguish between the different vowel qualities. Nor is there any coordination in the other direction. The syllable saw, for example, is rendered by the sign saw, but also by the sign nig. Both of these are often used for the same syllable in the same text. Cuneiform was in many ways unsuited to Akkadian, among its flaws was its inability to represent important phonemes in Semitic, including a glottal stop, pharyngeals, and emphatic consonants. In addition, cuneiform was a syllabary writing system—i.e., a consonant plus vowel comprised one writing unit—frequently inappropriate for a Semitic language made up of triconsonantal roots i.e., three consonants plus any vowels. Development Akkadian is divided into several varieties based on geography and historical period Old Akkadian, 2500-1950 BC Old Babylonian and Old Assyrian, 1950-1530 BC Middle Babylonian and Middle Assyrian, 1530-1000 BC Neo-Babylonian and Neo-Assyrian, 1000-600 BC Late Babylonian, 600 BC to 100 Adon of the earliest known Akkadian inscriptions was found on a bowl at Ur, addressed to the very early pre Sargonic king Meskianunna of Ur c. BC by his queen Gan Saman, who is thought to have been from Akkad. The Akkadian Empire, established by Sargon of Akkad, introduced the Akkadian language the language of Akkad as a written language, adapting Sumerian cuneiform orthography for the purpose. During the Middle Bronze Age Old Assyrian and Old Babylonian period, the language virtually displaced Sumerian, which is assumed to have been extinct as a living language by the 18th century BC. Old Akkadian, which was used until the end of the 3rd millennium BC, differs from both Babylonian and Assyrian, and was displaced by these dialects. By the 21st century BC Babylonian and Assyrian, which were to become the primary dialects, were easily distinguishable. Old Babylonian, along with the closely related dialect Mariotic, is clearly more innovative than the Old Assyrian dialect and the more distantly related Eblate language. For this reason, forms like Lu Prus I will decide are first encountered in Old Babylonian instead of the older La Prus. While generally more archaic, Assyrian developed certain innovations as well, such as the Assyrian vowel harmony, which is not comparable to that found in Turkish or Finnish. Eblate is even more so, retaining a productive dual and a relative pronoun declined in case, number and gender. Both of these had already disappeared in Old Akkadian. Over 20,000 cuneiform tablets in Old Akkadian have been recovered from the Kultip site in Anatolia. Most of the archaeological evidence is typical of Anatolia rather than of Assyria, but the use both of cuneiform and the dialect is the best indication of Assyrian presence. Old Babylonian was the language of King Hammurabi and his code, which is one of the oldest collections of laws in the world. See Code of Ur Nammu. The Middle Babylonian or Assyrian period started in the 16th century BC. The division is marked by the Kassite invasion of Babylonia around 1550 BC. The Kassites, who reigned for 300 years, gave up their own language in favor of Akkadian, but they had little influence on the language. At its apogee, Middle Babylonian was the written language of diplomacy of the entire ancient Orient, including Egypt. During this period, a large number of loan words were included in the language from Northwest Semitic languages and Hurrian, however, the use of these words was confined to the fringes of the Akkadian-speaking territory. Middle Assyrian served as a lingua franca in much of the ancient Near East of the Late Bronze Age Amarna period. During the Neo-Assyrian Empire, Neo-Assyrian began to turn into a chancellery language, being marginalized by Old Aramaic. 
Under the Achaemenids, Aramaic continued to prosper, but Assyrian continued its decline. The language's final demise came about during the Hellenistic period when it was further marginalized by Koine Greek, even though Neo-Assyrian cuneiform remained in use in literary tradition well into Parthian times. The latest known text in cuneiform Babylonian is an astronomical text dated to 75 AD. The youngest texts written in Akkadian date from the 3rd century AD. Old Assyrian developed as well during the 2nd millennium BC, but because it was a purely popular language, Kings wrote in Babylonian. Few long texts are preserved. From 1500 BC onwards, the language is termed Middle Assyrian. During the first millennium BC, Akkadian progressively lost its status as a lingua franca. In the beginning, from around 1000 BC, Akkadian and Aramaic were of equal status, as can be seen in the number of copied texts. Clay tablets were written in Akkadian, while scribes writing on papyrus and leather used Aramaic. From this period on, one speaks of Neo-Babylonian and Neo-Assyrian. Neo-Assyrian received an upswing in popularity in the 10th century BC when the Assyrian kingdom became a major power with the Neo-Assyrian Empire, but texts written exclusively in Neo-Assyrian disappear within ten years of Nineveh's destruction in 612 BC. After the end of the Mesopotamian kingdoms, which fell due to the Persian conquest of the area, Akkadian which existed solely in the form of late Babylonian disappeared as a popular language. However, the language was still used in its written form, and even after the Greek invasion under Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC, Akkadian was still a contender as a written language, but spoken Akkadian was likely extinct by this time, or at least rarely used. The latest positively identified Akkadian text comes from the 1st century AD. Topic. Decipherment The Akkadian language began to be rediscovered when Karsten Niebuhr in 1767 was able to make extensive copies of cuneiform texts and publish them in Denmark. The deciphering of the texts started immediately, and bilinguals, in particular Old Persian Akkadian bilinguals, were of great help. Since the texts contained several royal names, isolated signs could be identified, and were presented in 1802 by Georg Friedrich Grotefen. By this time it was already evident that Akkadian was a Semitic language, and the final breakthrough in deciphering the language came from Edward Hinks, Henry Rawlinson and Jules Oppert in the middle of the 19th century. The Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago recently completed a 21-volume dictionary of the Akkadian language, which is available commercially and online. Topic. Dialects The following table summarizes the dialects of Akkadian identified with certainty so far. Some researchers such as w. Sommerfeld 2003, believe that the Old Akkadian variant used in the older texts is not an ancestor of the later Assyrian and Babylonian dialects, but rather a separate dialect that was replaced by these two dialects and which died out early. Eblate, formerly thought of as yet another Akkadian dialect, is now generally considered a separate East Semitic language. Topic. Phonetics and phonology Because Akkadian as a spoken language is extinct and no contemporary descriptions of the pronunciation are known, little can be said with certainty about the phonetics and phonology of Akkadian. Some conclusions can be made, however, due to the relationship to the other Semitic languages and variant spellings of Akkadian words. Topic. Consonants. The following table gives the consonant sounds distinguished in the Akkadian use of cuneiform, with the presumed pronunciation in IPA transcription according to Hunergard and Woods, which most closely corresponds to recent reconstructions of Proto-Semitic phonology. The parenthesized symbol following is the transcription used in the literature, in the cases where that symbol is different from the phonetic symbol. This transcription has been suggested for all Semitic languages by the Deutsche Morgenlandische Gesellschaft DMG, and is therefore known as DMG Umschrift. Topic. Reconstruction Akkadian emphatic consonants are typically reconstructed as adjectives, which are thought to be the oldest realization of emphatics across the Semitic languages. For the sibilants, traditionally, s, has been held to be postalveolar, 
and s z s analyzed as fricatives, but attested assimilations in Akkadian suggest otherwise. For example, when the possessive suffix su is added to the root awit word, it is written awasu his word, even though sometimes would be expected. The most straightforward interpretation of this shift from t's to ss is that s s form a pair of voiceless alveolar affricates. T s t s asterisk s is a voiceless alveolar fricative s, and asterisk z is a voiced alveolar affricate or fricative d z tilde z. The assimilation is then awit plus su greater than awat su. In this vein, an alternative transcription of asterisk s is asterisk s, with the macron below indicating a soft articulation in Semitic transcription. Other interpretations are possible, however. Could have been assimilated to the preceding t, yielding t s, which would later have been simplified to s s. The phoneme, r, has traditionally been interpreted as a trill but its pattern of alternation with h, suggests it was a velar or uvular fricative. In the Hellenistic period, Akkadian r was transcribed using the Greek ρ, indicating it was pronounced similarly as an alveolar trill, though Greeks may also have perceived a uvular trill as ρ. Topic: <laughs> Descent from Proto-Semitic. Several Proto-Semitic phonemes are lost in Akkadian. The Proto-Semitic glottal stop asterisk, as well as the fricatives asterisk, asterisk h, asterisk h are lost as consonants, either by sound change or orthographically, but they gave rise to the vowel quality e not exhibited in Proto-Semitic. The voiceless lateral fricatives asterisk s, asterisk merged with the sibilants as in Canaanite, leaving 19 consonantal phonemes. Old Akkadian preserved the asterisk s phoneme longest but it eventually merged with asterisk s, beginning in the Old Babylonian period. The following table shows Proto-Semitic phonemes and their correspondences among Akkadian, Modern Standard Arabic and Tiberian Hebrew. Topic vowels The existence of a back mid-vowel, o, has been proposed, but the cuneiform writing gives no good proof for this. There is limited contrast between different u signs in lexical texts, but this scribal differentiation may re-ect the superimposition of the Sumerian phonological system for which an o phoneme has also been proposed, rather than a separate phoneme in Akkadian. All consonants and vowels appear in long and short forms. Long consonants are represented in writing as double consonants, and long vowels are written with a macron a, e, i, u. This distinction is phonemic, and is used in the grammar, for example Iprusu that he decided versus Iprusu they decided. Topic stress The stress patterns of Akkadian are disputed, with some authors claiming that nothing is known of the topic. There are however certain points of reference, such as the rule of vowel syncope see the next paragraph, and some forms in the cuneiform that might represent the stressing of certain vowels, however, attempts at identifying a rule for stress have so far been unsuccessful. Hunergard 2005 claims that stress in Akkadian is completely predictable. In his syllable typology there are three syllable weights, light v, c, v, heavy c, v, c, c, v, c, v, and super heavy c, v, c. If the last syllable is super heavy, it is stressed, otherwise the rightmost heavy syllable is stressed. If a word contains only light syllables, the first syllable is stressed. A rule of Akkadian phonology is that certain short and probably unstressed vowels are dropped. The rule is that the last vowel of a succession of syllables that end in a short vowel is dropped, for example the declinational root of the verbal adjective of a root prs is paris. Thus the masculine singular nominative is pars um. Topic grammar topic Morphology topic Consonantal root Most roots of the Akkadian language consist of three consonants called the radicals, but some roots are composed of four consonants so-called quadriradicals. The radicals are occasionally represented in transcription in uppercase letters, for example prs to decide. Between and around these radicals various infixes, suffixes and prefixes, having word generating or grammatical functions, are inserted. The resulting consonant vowel pattern differentiates the original meaning of the root. Also, the middle radical can be geminated, which is represented by a doubled consonant in transcription and sometimes in the cuneiform writing itself. The consonants, w, j and n are termed weak radicals and roots containing these radicals give rise to irregular forms. Topic case, number and gender Formally, Akkadian has three numbers singular, dual and plural and three cases nominative, accusative and genitive. 
However, even in the earlier stages of the language, the dual number is vestigial, and its use is largely confined to natural pairs eyes, ears, etc. And adjectives are never found in the dual. In the dual and plural, the accusative and genitive are merged into a single oblique case. Akkadian, unlike Arabic, but like Hebrew, has only sound plurals formed by means of a plural ending i.e. no broken plurals formed by changing the word stem. As in all Semitic languages, some masculine nouns take the prototypically feminine plural ending at. The nouns serum king and seratum queen and the adjective danum strong will serve to illustrate the case system of Akkadian. As is clear from the above table, the adjective and noun endings differ only in the masculine plural. Certain nouns, primarily those referring to geography, can also form a locative ending in um in the singular and the resulting forms serve as adverbials. These forms are generally not productive, but in the Neo-Babylonian the um locative replaces several constructions with the preposition ina. In the later stages of Akkadian the mimation word final m along with nunation dual final n that occurs at the end of most case endings has disappeared, except in the locative. Later, the nominative and accusative singular of masculine nouns collapse to u and in Neo-Babylonian most word final short vowels are dropped. As a result, case differentiation disappeared from all forms except masculine plural nouns. However many texts continued the practice of writing the case endings although often sporadically and incorrectly. As the most important contact language throughout this period was Aramaic, which itself lacks case distinctions, it is possible that Akkadian's loss of cases was an aerial as well as phonological phenomenon. Topic noun states and nominal sentences As is also the case in other Semitic languages, Akkadian nouns may appear in a variety of states depending on their grammatical function in a sentence. The basic form of the noun is the status rectus the governed state, which is the form as described above, complete with case endings. In addition to this, Akkadian has the status absolutus the absolute state and the status constructus construct state. The latter is found in all other Semitic languages, while the former appears only in Akkadian and some dialects of Aramaic. The status absolutus is characterized by the loss of a noun's case ending, e.g., a will, one, a will um su sirak translation, this man is a thief, two, serum la sonin translation, the king who cannot be rivaled. The status constructus is a great deal more common, and has a much wider range of applications. It is employed when a noun is followed by another noun in the genitive, a pronominal suffix, or a verbal clause in the subjunctive, and typically takes the shortest form of the noun which is phonetically possible. In general, this amounts to the loss of case endings with short vowels, with the exception of the genitive i in nouns preceding a pronominal suffix, hence, 3 mari su translation, his son, its masculine son but 4 mar ser im translation, the king's son There are numerous exceptions to this general rule, usually involving potential violations of the language's phonological limitations. Most obviously, Akkadian does not tolerate word final consonant clusters, so nouns like kalbam dog and marum front would have a legal construct state forms asterisk kalb and asterisk mar unless modified. In many of these instances, the first vowel of the word is simply repeated, e.g. kalab, maher. This rule, however, does not always hold true, especially in nouns where a short vowel has historically been elided, e.g. saknum governor. In these cases, the lost vowel is restored in the construct state so saknum yields sakin, 5 kalab bellum translation, the master's dog 6 sakin alim a genitive relation can also be expressed with the relative preposition sa, and the noun that the genitive phrase depends on appears in status rectus, 7 salamatum sa a will esnana translation, the alliances of the ruler of esnana literally alliances which man of esnana has the same preposition is also used to introduce true relative clauses, in which case the verb verb is placed in the subjunctive mood, 7 a will um sa mat am i kasudo u translation, the man who conquered the land topic verbal morphology topic verb aspects the Akkadian verb has six finite verb aspects preterite, perfect, present, imperative, precative and vedative and three infinite forms infinitive, participle and verbal adjective. The preterite is used for actions that are seen by the speaker as having occurred at a single point in time. The present is primarily imperfective in meaning and is used for concurrent and future actions as well as past actions with a temporal dimension. The final three finite forms are injunctive where the imperative and the precative together form a paradigm for positive commands and wishes, and the vedative is used for negative wishes. Additionally the periphrastic prohibitive, formed by the present form of the verb and the negative adverb la, is used to express negative commands. 
The infinitive of the Akkadian verb is a verbal noun, and in contrast to some other languages the Akkadian infinitive can be declined in case. The verbal adjective is an adjectival form and designates the state or the result of the action of the verb, and consequently the exact meaning of the verbal adjective is determined by the semantics of the verb itself. The participle, which can be active or passive, is another verbal adjective and its meaning is similar to the English gerund. The following table shows the conjugation of the G-stem verbs derived from the root prs to decide in the various verb aspects of Akkadian. The table below shows the different affixes attached to the preterite aspect of the verb root prs to decide, and as can be seen, the grammatical genders differ only in the second person singular and third person plural. Topic verb moods Akkadian verbs have three moods, indicative, used in independent clauses, is unmarked. Subjunctive, used in dependent clauses. The subjunctive is marked in forms which do not end in a vowel by the suffix u compare Arabic and Ugaritic subjunctives, but is otherwise unmarked. In the later stages of most dialects, the subjunctive is indistinct, as short final vowels were mostly lost. Venative or allative. The venative is not a mood in the strictest sense, being a development of the first person dative pronominal suffix am, m, nim. With verbs of motion, it often indicates motion towards an object or person, e.g., alik, he went, versus ilicum, he came. However, this pattern is not consistent, even in earlier stages of the language, and its use often appears to serve a stylistic rather than morphological or lexical function. The following table demonstrates the verb moods of verbs derived from the root prs to decide, to separate. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Verb patterns. Akkadian verbs have 13 separate derived stems formed on each root. The basic, underived, stem is the g-stem from the German Grundstamm, meaning basic stem. Causative or intensive forms are formed with the doubled d-stem, and it gets its name from the doubled middle radical that is characteristic of this form. The doubled middle radical is also characteristic of the present, but the forms of the d-stem use the secondary conjugational affixes, so a d-form will never be identical to a form in a different stem. The s stem is formed by adding a prefix s, and these forms are mostly causatives. Finally, the passive forms of the verb are in the n stem, formed by adding a n prefix. However the n element is assimilated to a following consonant, so the original, n, is only visible in a few forms. Furthermore, reflexive and iterative verbal stems can be derived from each of the basic stems. The reflexive stem is formed with an infix ta, and the derived stems are therefore called gt, dt, street and nt, and the preterite forms of the xt stem are identical to the perfects of the x stem. Iteratives are formed with the infix tan, giving the gtn, dtn, saintn and ntn. Because of the assimilation of n, the n is only seen in the present forms, and the xtn preterite is identical to the xt derivative. The final stem is the sadi stem, a form mostly attested only in poetic texts, and whose meaning is usually identical to either the s stem or the d stem of the same verb. It is formed with the s prefix like the s stem in addition to a doubled middle radical like the d stem. An alternative to this naming system is a numerical system. The basic stems are numbered using Roman numerals so that g, d, s and n become i, 2, 3 and iv, respectively, and the infixes are numbered using Arabic numerals, 1 for the forms without an infix, 2 for the xt, and 3 for the xtn. The two numbers are separated using a solidus. As an example, the Saintan stem is called 3, 3. The most important user of this system is the Chicago Assyrian Dictionary. There is mandatory congruence between the subject of the sentence and the verb, and this is expressed by prefixes and suffixes. There are two different sets of affixes, a primary set used for the forms of the G and N stems, and a secondary set for the D and S stems. The stems, their nomenclature and examples of the third-person masculine singular stative of the verb parasim root prs, to decide, distinguish, separate is shown below. Topic. Stative A very often appearing form which can be formed by nouns, adjectives as well as by verbal adjectives is the stative. Nominal predicatives occur in the status absolutus and correspond to the verb to be in English. The stative in Akkadian corresponds to the Egyptian pseudo-participle. The following table contains an example of using the noun serum king, the adjective rapsum wide, and the verbal adjective parsum decided.
Thus, the stative in Akkadian is used to convert simple stems into effective sentences, so that the form ser ata is equivalent to you were king, you are king, and you will be king. Hence, the stative is independent of time forms. Topic. Derivation Beside the already explained possibility of derivation of different verb stems, Akkadian has numerous nominal formations derived from verb roots. A very frequently encountered form is the mapras form. It can express the location of an event, the person performing the act and many other meanings. If one of the root consonants is labial p, b, m, the prefix becomes na mapras greater than napras. Examples for this are maskinum place location from sken set place put masrahum splendor from sir be splendid maserum guards from nur guard nafarum sum from fur summarize A very similar formation is the maprast form the noun derived from this nominal formation is grammatically feminine the same rules as for the mapras form apply for example maskatum deposit from sken set place put narkaptum carriage from rkb ride drive mount the suffix ut is used to derive abstract nouns. The nouns which are formed with this suffix are grammatically feminine. The suffix can be attached to nouns, adjectives and verbs, e.g. abutum paternity from abum father, rebutum size from rabum large, wasutum leaving from z leave. Also derivatives of verbs from nouns, adjectives and numerals are numerous. For the most part, a d stem is derived from the root of the noun or adjective. The derived verb then has the meaning of Make X do something, or becoming X. For example, dusum let sprout from dasu grass, solusum to do something for the third time from solace three. Topic pronouns. Topic personal pronouns. Topic independent personal pronouns. Independent personal pronouns in Akkadian are as follows Topic. Suffixed or enclitic pronouns Suffixed or enclitic pronouns mainly denoting the genitive, accusative and dative are as follows Topic. Demonstrative pronouns Demonstrative pronouns in Akkadian differ from the Western Semitic variety. The following table shows the Akkadian demonstrative pronouns according to Near and Far Dyxis. Topic: Relative pronouns. Relative pronouns in Akkadian are shown in the following table. Unlike plural relative pronouns, singular relative pronouns in Akkadian exhibit full declension for case. However, only the form sa originally accusative masculine singular survived, while the other forms disappeared in time. Topic. Interrogative pronouns The following table shows the interrogative pronouns used in Akkadian. Topic. Prepositions Akkadian has prepositions which consist mainly of only one word. For example, ina in, on, out, through, under, ana to, for, after, approximately, adi to, asu because of, eli up, over, is to, ultu of, since, mala in accordance with, idi also, with. There are, however, some compound prepositions which are combined with ina and ana e.g. ina maher forwards, ina balu without, ana eser up to, ana maher forwards. Regardless of the complexity of the preposition, the following noun is always in the genitive case. Examples: Ina bidum in the house, from the house; Ana dumicum to do good; Idi serum with the king; Ana eser marisu up to his son. Topic: <laughs> Numerals. Since numerals are written mostly as a number sign in the cuneiform script, the transliteration of many numerals is not well ascertained yet. Along with the counted noun, the cardinal numerals are in the status absolutus. Because other cases are very rare, the forms of the status rectus are known only by isolated numerals. 
The numerals 1 and 2 as well as 21 to 29, 31 to 39, 41 to 49 correspond with the counted in the grammatical gender, while the numerals 3 to 20, 30, 40 and 50 show gender polarity, i.e. if the counted noun is masculine, the numeral would be feminine and vice versa. This polarity is typical of the Semitic languages and appears also in classical Arabic for example. The numerals 60, 100 and 1000 do not change according to the gender of the counted noun. Counted nouns more than two appear in the plural form. However, body parts which occur in pairs appear in the dual form in Akkadian, e.g. sapum foot becomes sipon two feet. The ordinals are formed with a few exceptions by adding a case ending to the nominal form perus the p, r and s must be substituted with the suitable consonants of the numeral. It is noted, however, that in the case of the numeral one, the ordinal masculine and the cardinal number are the same. A metathesis occurs in the numeral 4. The following table contains the masculine and feminine forms of the status absolutus of some of the Akkadian cardinal numbers, as well as the corresponding ordinals. Examples, Herb Asatum four wives, male numeral, me at Alanu 100 towns. Topic. Syntax Topic. Nominal phrases Adjectives, relative clauses and appositions follow the noun. While numerals precede the counted noun. In the following table the nominal phrase Urbit Seru Danudam Sa Alam Apusu Abuya the four strong kings who built the city are my fathers is analyzed. Topic. Sentence syntax Akkadian sentence order was subject plus object plus verb SOV, which sets it apart from most other ancient Semitic languages such as Arabic and Biblical Hebrew, which typically have a verb subject object VSO word order. Modern South Semitic languages in Ethiopia also have SOV order, but these developed within historical times from the classical verb subject object VSO language Gies. It has been hypothesized that this word order was a result of influence from the Sumerian language, which was also SOV. There is evidence that native speakers of both languages were in intimate language contact, forming a single society for at least 500 years, so it is entirely likely that a sprachbun could have formed. Further evidence of an original VSO or SVO ordering can be found in the fact that direct and indirect object pronouns are suffixed to the verb. Word order seems to have shifted to SVO, VSO late in the first millennium BC to the first millennium AD, possibly under the influence of Aramaic. Topic. Vocabulary The Akkadian vocabulary is mostly of Semitic origin. Although classified as East Semitic, many elements of its basic vocabulary find no evident parallels in related Semitic languages. For example, Maru son Semitic asterisk BN, Katu hand Semitic asterisk YD, Sepu foot Semitic asterisk RGL, Kabu say Semitic asterisk QWL, Azuzu stand Semitic asterisk QWM, Anna to for Semitic asterisk Li. Due to extensive contact with Sumerian and Aramaic, the Akkadian vocabulary contains many loan words from these languages. Aramaic loan words, however, were limited to the first centuries of the first millennium BC and primarily in the north and middle parts of Mesopotamia, whereas Sumerian loan words were spread in the whole linguistic area. Beside the previous languages, some nouns were borrowed from Hurrian, Kassite, Ugaritic and other ancient languages. Since Sumerian and Hurrian, two non-Semitic languages, differ from Akkadian in word structure, only nouns and some adjectives not many verbs were borrowed from these languages. However, some verbs were borrowed along with many nouns from Aramaic and Ugaritic, both of which are Semitic languages. The following table contains examples of loan words in Akkadian. Akkadian was also a source of borrowing to other languages, above all Sumerian. Some examples are Sumerian Dari, lastingly from Akkadian Daru, Sumerian Ra Gaba, writers, messenger from Akkadian Rakibu. Topic: <laughs> Sample text. The following is the seventh section of the Hammurabi Law Code, written in the mid-18th century BC. Akkadian. 
Summa Awilam Lu Kaspam Lu Hurasam Lu Wardam Lu Amtamla Alpam Lu Amuram Lu Amaram U Lu Mima Sumsu Anakat Mar Awilam U Lu Warat Awilam Balam Sibi Uraksadam Istam U Lu Anna Maserutam Imhorawilam Su Sarak Idik translation. If a man has bought silver or gold, a male or a female slave, an ox, a sheep, or a donkey, or anything for that matter, from another man or from another man's slave without witnesses or contract, or if he accepted something for safekeeping without same, then this man is a thief and hence to be killed. Topic: <laughs> Akkadian literature. Atrahasis epic, early second millennium BC. Enuma Elish, c. 18th century BC. Amarna letters, 14th century BC. Epic of Gilgamesh, Sin Lik Unani, Standard Version, 13th to 11th century BC. Ludlow Bell Nemaki. Topic. Notes. Topic. Sources. Topic. Further reading. Topic. General description and grammar. Gelb, I. J. Old Akkadian Writing and Grammar. Materials for the Assyrian Dictionary, No. 2. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-62304-1 Hasselbach, Rebecca. Sargonic Akkadian, A Historical and Comparative Study of the Syllabic Texts. Wiesbaden, Harrisowitz Verlag 2005. ISBN 978-3-447-05172-9 Hunergard, J. A. Grammar of Akkadian 3rd ed. 2011. Harvard Semitic Museum Studies 45. ISBN 978-1-57506-922-7-2 Requires login Hunergard, J. 2005. A Key to A Grammar of Akkadian. Harvard Semitic Studies. Eisenbrowns. 3 requires login. Soden, Wolfram von, Grundri der Akkadischen Grammatik. Analecta Orientalia. BD 33. Rom 1995. ISBN 88 7653 258 7. Streck, Michael P. Sprechen des Alten Orients. Wiss. Buckjes, Darmstadt 2005. ISBN 3 534 17996X. Ungnad, Arthur, Grammatik des Akkadischen. Neuberbeiting durch L. Matus, München 1969, 1979 5. AUFL. ISBN 3 406-02890-X. Woodard, Roger D. The Ancient Languages of Mesopotamia, Egypt and Aksum. Cambridge University Press 2008. ISBN 978 0 521 68497 2. Topic. Textbooks Reichel Borger, Babylonisch Assyrisch Lesestuck. Rom 1963, 3, Revidierte Auflage, 2006 Thiel. I2 Part 1, Elemente der Grammatik und der Schrift. Ubungsbiespiel. Glosser. Part 2, Die Texte in Umschrift. Part 3, Kommentar. Die Texte in Kielschrift. Richard Kaplis, Introduction to Akkadian. Biblical Institute Press, Rome 1988, 2002 4, AUFL, ISBN 88-7653-566-7 Kaspar K. Riemschneider, Lehrbuch des Akkadischen. Encyclopädie, Leipzig 1969, Langenscheidt Verl. Encyclopädie, Leipzig 1992 6. AUFL. ISBN 3-324-00364-4 Martin Worthington. Complete Babylonian, Teach Yourself. London 2010 ISBN 0 340 98388 4. Dictionaries Jeremy G. Black, Andrew George, Nicholas Postgate, A Concise Dictionary of Akkadian. Harrisovitz Verlag, Wiesbaden 2000. ISBN 3-447-04264-8 
Wolfram von Soden, Akkadisches Handwar Turbuk, 3 BDE. Wiesbaden 1958 1981. ISBN 3 X. Martha T. Roth, ed., The Assyrian Dictionary of the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago, 21 vols., in 26. Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago, Chicago 1956 2010, available free online. Topic. Akkadian cuneiform Cherry, A. 2003. A Basic Neo-Assyrian Cuneiform Syllabary. Toronto, O.N.T., Asher Cherry, York University. Cherry, A. 2003. Basic Individual Logograms Akkadian. Toronto, O.N.T., Asher Cherry, York University. Reichel Borger, Mesopotamisches Zeichenlexikon. Alter Orient und Altes Testament AOAT. BD 305. Ugarit Verlag, Münster 2004. ISBN 3-927120-82-0 René Labat, Manuel de Epigraphie Acadienne. Paul Guthner, Paris 1976, 1995 6, AUFL, ISBN 2-7053-3583-8 Topic. Technical literature on specific subjects Ignis J. Gelb, Old Akkadian Writing and Grammar. Materials for the Assyrian Dictionary. BD2. University of Chicago Press, Chicago 1952, 1961, 1973. ISBN 0-226-6304-1 ISSN 0076-518-X Marcus Hilgert, Akkadish in Der Riii Zeit. Rima Verlag, Münster 2002. ISBN 3-930454-32-7 Walter Sommerfeld, Bemerkungen zur Dialektgliederung Altakkadisch, Assyrisch und Babylonisch. In, Alter Orient und Altes Testament AOAT. Ugarit Verlag, Münster 274.2003. ISSN 0931-4296 Topic. External links Introduction to Cuneiform Script and the Akkadian Language on the Open Richly Annotated Cuneiform Corpus Akkadian Cuneiform on Omniglot Writing Systems and Languages of the World Wilford, John Noble the 7th of June 2011. After Ninety Years, A Dictionary of an Ancient World. The New York Times. p. 2. Akkadian Language Samples A Detailed Introduction to Akkadian Assyrian Grammar with Christomathy and Glossary 1921 by Samuel A. B. Mercer Akkadian English-French Online Dictionary Old Babylonian Text Corpus includes dictionary the Assyrian Dictionary of the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago CAD. Old Akkadian Writing and Grammar, by I. J. Gelb, 2nd ed., 1961 Glossary of Old Akkadian, by I. J. Gelb, 1957 List of 1280 Akkadian roots, with a representative verb form for each Recordings of Assyriologists reading Babylonian and Assyrian Unicode fonts for ancient scripts and Akkadian font for Ubuntu Linux-based operating system TTF ancient fonts. The Assyrian Dictionary of the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago CAD. Akkadian in the wiki Glossing Ancient Languages Recommendations for the Interlinear Morphemic Glossing of Akkadian Texts